Hey everyone, Joe here. Well, today I got a gear review for you, and what we have today is the DDB Studio Strobes from Paul C. Buff. Now, I have the DB400 in my hand, and I actually have a DB800 right here, so we're gonna be covering both models. But anyway, I purchased these a while back uh, out of my own pocket, and I use these in the strobe my, myself. And I really want to give you an honest review on them, so let's hop in here and get to this. Okay, everyone, welcome back. Now, like I said, I, a while back, I purchased these myself, and I did a little uh, video on that, you know, give an overview and kind of demonstrating the power of these. And if anybody wants to see that little overview video, I will link it in the cards as well in the, uh, at the end of the video. Now, I've had these probably going on since around Christmas, and so I've been using them a lot, did quite a few photo shoots with them, and I'll kind of throw those uh, photos up uh, at towards the end of the video if anybody wants to see those photos. But overall, I really do like these, but there are some quirks I'm going to get to towards the end of the video, video of stuff that really annoys the living mess out of me about these. Now... Before we get to the bad part, let's kind of go over the good things about it. First uh, first thing is, they are really nice built units. I can easily uh, put these on a 9 foot stand and easily hold a uh, 5 foot octagon softbox with these. So these, if you're worried about these bending and giving too much or being under a lot of weight, I've had no issues with them. Of course, like I said, the biggest softbox I use them here in my studio is a 5 footer. Now, let me Go, start going over the power settings and stuff. Now, everybody knows the DigiBees are the upgrade of the Alien Bees. And the Alien Bees were pretty great uh, little studio strobes, what they was. Very entry level, priced just right for everybody uh, basically getting started and doing uh, studio uh, flash photography. They were definitely the way to go when you wanted to go from speed lights to strobes. And these are no exception. But you got a little bit more of an upgrade option here. And these aren't much more than the Alien Bees uh, are now. So these are only a few dollars more. So they're great value for the money. And anyway, so one of the things that's improved is, you probably noticed, is the full digital interface now. It's no longer analog. Everything's fully digital controlled. Even the modern lamp has been changed out from a you know regular uh, light bulb now over to a uh, 400 watt equivalent LED, which is actually 75 watt LED, which is really, really fast. 75 watt LEDs, you know, freaking pretty powerful. So that's really nice. And also the power adjustments have increased. Before on like the DB800, uh, uh, you went from 320 watt seconds and you went down to five, uh, you went down to 10 watt seconds on the Alien Bees. You can now go down one more stop lower to five watt seconds. And of course, this one goes from 160 watt seconds, so you can now go down to 2.5 watt seconds, which is a full seven stops of power. Also, these are now adjustable in one tenth power increments. That's kind of annoying in a way, because uh, a lot of people like the wooden, uh, when they get on the Easter speed light, they go out full power, half, you know, a quarter. But after, honestly, after you uh, get used to it like a week or two, it doesn't even really bother you. And you kind of enjoy having those smaller increments in one tenth to be able to fine tune your power. So, now the flash tube as well as the modern lamp is daylight balanced at 5600K. And I gotta say, the, they're very consistent. Very, very consistent. I actually can get my uh, cameras just punch in the Kelvin uh, power increment at, say, at 5600. And when I pull it in the white room, I don't even have to adjust the uh, white balance anymore. They're that, you know, good. Now, another thing, uh, coming from uh, speed lights, a lot of people enjoy that really, really fast flash power. And these are no exception. The DB400 here gets a 1,450th of a second at full power. So it's extremely, extremely uh, fast at full power. Now, the DB800 here is 975th of a second. So, almost 1 1,000th of a second speed on this one. So, it's very, very fast, even at full power. So, if you're any kind of in uh, water drop photography or any kind of uh, photography where it's really crucial, you freeze motion, these are really good to have and work really, really great. Now, the power on these, the DB400, I test these out against speed lights. 
And essentially like my young new YM 560 Mark IVs, which I have like eight of those freaking things. It takes three of those to equal the power of this 160 watt uh, second strobe here. So the power on these is not exaggerated. This is actually really, really dead on. And also it, the same token, it takes six speed lights to equal this uh, 320 watt second over here. So these, the power, uh, Policy Buff did rate the power accuracy of these pretty close to being real, <laughs> you know, dead on. So they're not exaggerated whatsoever. And a lot of companies, they uh, introduce studio strobes and stuff. They kind of rate the power a little higher than it really is. And so these are rated, you know, very accurate. Now let me see if I'm missing anything else on this. Uh, oh, yeah. Now on the... DV400 here at full power recycle time and time is a half a second whereas the recycle time on the, the DV800 is one second which is still pretty fast you know for studio use it's you know you're not it'll work really good so not a big issue and let's see if there's anything here all right now like I said these uh, are uh, daylight balance at 5600 is UV coated and this is a 14 millimeter uh, flash tube in it. Now, Policy Buff uh, recommends if you go replace these to get them from Policy Buff. And I did buy one myself just in case I accidentally break it. So, let me see if there's anything else I really kind of mentioned. Uh, the DB800 is 2.9 pounds. This one's like 2.5 pounds. That's because the capacitor in the DB800 is a little bit bigger. But that's really about it. They're really not that large. As you can see, this is fitting in my hand. You know, they're a lot smaller than I thought this would be. They're actually a little bit smaller than the older uh, Alien Bees, matter of fact. So, that's really about all it. These are really great. They work really nice. The buttons and stuff feel great on it. Got a nice rubber feel to them. These are not plasticky. They feel very professional. Uh, so, it's done pretty decent here I really do like it but now it's time I'm gonna go here and do a little bit of ranting about the things I do not like okay let's talk about the things I do not like about this thing well first of all when you put a soft box on this thing there's no handle back here so if this thing's sitting up on a soft box and you go to adjust it there's no handle it flops over forward you have to grab your soft box and actually use it to pull the unit back. If you got a small softbox, it's not that heavy, say like a 24 by 36 inch or just around 36 octagon softbox, it's not too big of an issue. You know, it's really not. But if you get like a larger softbox, you know, it's you really, really have a hard time. I actually had to take the back cover off my five foot octagon uh, softbox and grab the rods to adjust it. That's annoying, that's a big issue. There should be a handle somewhere on this so you can grab a hold of it. And that way you can adjust it. You know, I don't really don't see that being an issue because a lot of your uh, speed, uh, units, flash units and strobes have handles on them these days. So you can grab a hold of them. That should be on here. So a little bit of housing modification will go a long ways there. Another issue that I have is I'll show you on the camera up here at the top. You probably can't notice it too much because I've straightened the back, but I have bent the uh, copper connectors on this uh, transceiver a few times. And that's because when it sets in here, you put it in, you don't want to be taking it in and out all the time because you could loosen the connections in here and no longer get a good connection or signal. Here's another problem. Nice compact unit. Antennas here on top to squeeze in so you can mount them to a uh, softbox. What's in your way? And I'll show you on the top camera here. So when you're trying to clamp it down, you end up pushing this. I've already bent these over two or three times, pushing them out of the unit. That's an issue. Because, like I said, you don't want to take them out all the time because you loosen the connections. But you have to change the softbox because there's just not enough room. This really, especially as inexpensive as these, as these are, should be made into the unit. Or at least 
modify the unit so these sit further down in it whereas the antenna only barely sticks out that way there's nothing you could actually push on to actually damage it because it'd be further down in the unit and less leverage on it to actually uh, push it out that's something I really do recommend policy buff look into because it, be honest with you though they could just make this into the unit here you don't need an antenna most speed locks uh, these days even the cheaper ones like the young news I use a lot especially for outdoor portraits and stuff have transmitters built in transceivers built into a matter of fact if policy buff can make these and Young Nuke and other companies can make other speed lights with transmitters built in. Policy Buff can afford to put these in the units and you shouldn't even have to buy them separately. That would make this more of a perk. So you turn around at if knowing that these already have the flash uh, transceivers in there, it'd be more of a perk to spend money on this little expensive jewel, which I have a, a review coming up on, you know, within a day or two. I just wanted to get this out of the way first. So that's. That's an issue. That bothers the living mess out of me. And like I said, that's something I really think Policy Buff needs to look into. Because I'll show you here on the camera, a uh, top camera, you know, there's just not much, it doesn't really sit in there probably a quarter inch at the most. So let me see, put it on your top camera. Let's see, put it in there. There you go. And you can see, it really doesn't fit in there far at all. And that is a huge issue. Okay. Now to get that away, another issue, you probably about noticed the flash tube maybe looks a little crooked on here. That's because I've bumped it a few times. When you go to put a, which is easy for the reflector, you have to squeeze these in. And these hold, these are stiff, and don't get me wrong. It's hard if you got a large saw box to center that up. So a lot of times what you end up with is something like this or three of them in there, then one of them not. <laughs> and it doesn't always hurt, uh, fit right. And what you, you end up hanging the tube, which is a huge issue. What I would like to see is probably one of those smaller tubes put in here. A lot of these newer uh, units face like the 8600 from Godox has like the little tubes inside a little glass, a shield, which you can touch. These you can't touch. So if you accidentally touch it or are banging around, you're not actually damaging directly to the actual flash tube. And like I said, it's got these nice little wires and stuff in here. And plus you don't want to touch it because the oil on your hand can uh, cause temperature variations on the glass and crack it. So, yeah, the flash tube needs to be changed. Maybe something a little smaller, maybe stand up. I'll show a picture on the video here. Something of that nature. That way, because it would be just a little bit more dependable. Because really, these hold very good. Don't get me wrong, it's just very hard at times to get those on there with the accident to getting the softbox on these, trying to set it and adjust it. Which with this, bit in the way, it only compounds the issue, making it harder to put the dings soft boxes on okay last little complaint here is the bracket on top now this is something policy buff really needs to change out because this little cheap bracket here doesn't hold worth a shit it straight up does not most uh for example as you can see the threads here on this thing are coarse thread and i'll put it on the top camera here so you can see Get yeah, it focused in, yeah. So you don't have much clamping pressure when you put this on a light stand. And it will still woggle and wiggle around on your light stand. It's really not big of an issue when it's setting up this way. But if you put it on a boom arm, for example, sideways, and want to put your beauty dish on it, it turns, which is a huge issue. And no matter how much you tighten this down, it just really doesn't seem to hold worth a lick. And you have a hard issue tightening down because it's coarse thread. And you also have to worry about tightening it too much because this through a thin aluminum will probably crack. 
Most of your speed light brackets are thicker than this. This is really cheap. Policy Buff really needs to look at this and redesign this. You need something that you can put this on a stand and clamp it down tight, not having to worry about this cracking and get plenty of leverage tightening it down because that this is just too cheap. This really is. This is a, this here is a disappointing, to say the least. Disappointing is a good word. How I got around this on my current light stand was I actually had to get the boom arm and the end that uh, the white uh, attachment end on it actually had to drill through. I drilled a small little eighth inch or quarter inch uh, hole just so the bolt doesn't actually tighten into it. It's kind of just goes in there and kind of acts like a cotter pin so you, it doesn't have way to twist on it. So that way it'd have to twist the entire boom arm, which the boom arm tightens down very good. And let's tighten this down. It still wiggles a little bit, but at least now it was, does not twist on me. And nobody should have to do that just to get this thing to tighten down. It really shouldn't. But anyway, that's the only, that's the issues I have with it. It's almost a perfect studio strobe. But those little issues that I mentioned just take away from its glory. It really does. They did, did a lot of great things with this, but on the few things that really mattered uh, as far as usability, they just dropped the ball on. So yeah, these need to be in it or made into it so you don't have to buy them. Needs a handle. The tube needs a different tube that's uh, that you got a protective glass cover over so you don't have to worry about damaging this, getting soft boxes on, and this bracket needs updating. Other than that, fantastic, great built, heavy duty little strobe, and I actually really do like, and I think it gives you extremely pleasing light uh, when used with the proper modifiers, of course, and gives you very consistent light. So, I do recommend it. Uh, I'll always have them linked down in the description below because I've been we'll be using these for quite a few years to come. Happy with my purchase overall. Just those few little quirks there, little four things, just annoy the living hell out of me. But other than that, uh, you find ways to work around it, and I enjoy using them pretty much for the most part. But anyway, that's it for this gear review. I'll post a few photos and stuff at the end of the video here uh, showing everything that I've actually done with it. But anyway, that's it. If you're interested uh, in these, uh, I have a link to Policy Buff's website listed down in the description below. Anyway, that's it for this gear review of one. If you liked this gear review, found it helpful, how about give me a thumbs up? Thumbs up's always highly appreciated. If you're not subscribed to my channel, then please take the time to subscribe. Subscribing is free, it's for you, and let you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.